So if the basic object is to get the club head to collide with the back of the ball with the face at right angles, then you've got to basically be moving the club down the line at the point of impact. The question is, how do you get sufficient energy to do that? Now, intuitively, what we would do is just simply swing the club back along the line and into the ball. But that doesn't give us any kind of vertical energy. So we have to pick the club up in order to get the vertical energy. But obviously, then, if you were to drop it, you're just going to hit the top of the ball. So we're picking the club up and swinging it behind the ball. Unfortunately, if I just release this wrist angle, it will come into the back of the ball in the way that I wanted to hit the ball. So if you think of the chicken and the egg analogy, this is the egg. The basis of every golf swing is the lifting of the club, the rotating of the wrist so that the club goes behind the ball relative to the target, and the releasing of those angles which allows it to return from the back of the ball and strike the ball along the target line with a square club face. And everything else you're doing in your golf swing is to enhance the power of the shot. So if I were to lift my arms as well as my wrists, then obviously I get more vertical energy. If I were to rotate my body as well as my wrists, I'm going to get more horizontal energy. But I've then got to release both of these things that I've now added to the swing. That means the arm lift as well as the wrists and the corporate body rotation in order to get back to the starting position. If I do all of that and then turn, we have a golf swing. And that's basically all there is to it. But the very first thing that you have to learn you have to have the egg if you ever want to get a chicken, is you've got to be able to move your wrists in this way to deliver the golf club from behind the ball down the target line with a square face. And that means that this movement is the basis of everything. And this is the movement that you have to be able to understand what do your wrists have to do to make this basic movement, this central movement in a golf swing? So now that you understand a little bit better kind of what is going on with the wrists and why the wrists should be moving in this way, let's take a bit of a deep dive into the graph. Um, Obviously, looking at this graph to start off with, it's very difficult to actually understand what, what in the world is going on here. But if you look in a little bit more detail, you can actually see these three lines running through the graph. And these three lines are, are just basically showing you the address position where the little line is or the little circle is now, moving through to the top of the swing and impact and, and then through into the follow through. So if we start at the top of the swing, or at the address position rather, you can actually see, obviously, there's a certain amount of extension in the lead wrist, <clears throat> simply because of the way that we grip a golf club. When you grip your golf club with your hand and a little bit of, of uh, extension, simply to actually get the hand in the right position on the golf club, so you're not twisting the golf club because of the grip at impact. And then as you work through the swing, and you can see this is my swing, and the back swing, I'm actually going into flexion pretty quickly after starting the backswing. So the, the act of lifting and rotating the wrist in the backswing to get the club on plane is actually causing my wrist to go into flexion. Here I'm somewhere in the middle of the backswing. I Probably the, the club is around about shoulder head, the club head I'm talking about. The hands are around about belly or chest height just before kind of the solar plexus height. And as I go, go there, you can actually see I move back into uh, towards extension. Now, why in the world would that be happening? Well, the reason is, as, as of this position, I'm starting to become passive, or I am becoming passive with my arms and hands. That means I'm using the momentum of the club to pull my hands up to the top of the swing rather than lifting them. 
I'm allowing the wrist to relax rather than to do anything actively with it, bending it back or bending it up or picking the club up in any way. I'm simply holding on to the, to the grip and allowing the club to pull my hands to the top of the backswing which means that they move back to extension. And actually at the top of the backswing, I've actually got a little bit of extension in the wrist again. Not enough that you'd be able to see it in the video, but a little bit. And what's also very interesting is that this extension actually increases at the start of the downswing. So the hands and arms are coming down now, but because again of the inertia working on the arms, so gravity is pulling the arms and hands down, but inertia is holding the club up and back. So there is still a move towards extension as the club comes down. And again, I've probably got my, my hands back down to around about shoulder height by now. Um, and they're moving down. You can see that I've still got quite a lot of extension. It's at first then that my wrist starts to move back towards flexion. That means that the, um, that the club head is actually now being pulled towards the ground. And this pulling of the club head towards the ground, the club head, not, don't forget, is behind me, is actually causing the wrist to go into flexion. So I'm not actively bending my wrist back here. The club is doing it for me. It's the club falling towards the earth and the difference between the grip position and the head position, the head being behind me which is actually pulling the, the lead wrist back into flexion. And this happens until uh, a moment before impact. We're talking milliseconds here, where then the wrist not only rotates back into impact, getting the club square, but also goes in back into extension and is moving up into extension, a bit, a bit like I would be throwing a frisbee there. And you can see this kind of bump in the chart, that's impact. So you can actually see as the ball collides with the club, it actually bends my wrist back again before allowing it to go into extension and, and into an actual follow through. I find this is really interesting to see because you see this is all acceleration of the club head as the wrist actually allows itself to freely release through the ball. And this is what we're talking about with a free release, not holding the club tight and blocking this, which would create a straight line here, basically, but rather allowing it to move from extension into, or from flexion into extension and therefore generate club head speed. So this extension, together with the rotation of the club back, is also accelerating the club head. And don't forget, we're talking about moving the club head through the ball to the target as fast as we can whilst getting the club to square up at impact. So if we can get this neutral path, this high velocity and this square face, that's when golf really becomes fun. And you can see all of this in this graph. And I think it's amazing now that we're actually able to see these things happening and therefore understand better how we are creating these things. Now, obviously, this is not the only way to swing a golf club. You might see people at this position where the graph will actually stay pretty straight here. And rather than dipping down, they will actively hold the extension in their wrist almost until, until uh, the top of the swing. Others, on the other hand, will actively go into flexion at the top of the swing, but they will have to actively do this. <clears throat> and that's what I'm trying to get away from. I'm trying to get as much passive movement into the swing as possible, not only to generate club head speed, but to basically give the brain less to do. And if we can do that, then we become more reliable in the swing. Although a lot of movement here m you might associate with... Um, with the brain having more to do because it's being caused to a greater extent by simply the momentum of the club and gravity and the certain centrifugal forces in the swing. Um, I'm not actually having to think about an awful lot when I'm doing it. And I think that is basically what we've got to try and do here. So all of the things we've learned there are to allow us to move the wrist in a way which is going to deliver the club back to the ball, moving down the, the target line with a square face, with 
little or no thought. I'm going to lift the club and my arms while turning my body and rotating my wrists. And that's all got to happen at the same time. And then at around about chest height, I'm going passive. And I'm allowing the club almost to lift me, which is the reason that the, the hand goes into a little bit of extension. Gravity stops it and starts it down. And this is where I relax my body and allow myself to be centered before accelerating by turning my hips to the target actively by exploding out of my legs and accelerating the club through the ball to the target. That's all there is to it. But you have to get this movement working in your goal swing and I believe the majority of you out there are blocking this movement. You have to get this working. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you to all of my patrons. If you'd like to become a patron, I'll leave a link below. See you next time. Bye-bye.